Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog. Today I'm going to show you how to finish off an entrelock piece with end rectangles like those I've used in my Bon Voyage shawl. End rectangles create an interesting zigzagged or scalloped edge and are usually used in entrelock pieces that also began with a row of zigzagged base rectangles. The end rectangles are worked almost the same as the wrong side rectangles. I'll include a link in the video description to my wrong side rectangle tutorial just in case you need a refresher because today we're going to focus primarily on how to bind off the edge of the end rectangles. Let's get started. I've already worked the first end rectangle in my sample just like I would here for a regular wrong side rectangle. I just finished the final right side row and now I'm ready to turn things over for the final wrong side row where I'll be, be where I will begin binding off stitches. And you'll notice here I still have one stitch left from this lower rectangle and so there's one more gap to close where I'll need to do a left slanting decrease of these last two stitches, the one from the end rectangle and the one from this lower rectangle. Since I don't have to worry about having a super stretchy bind off or a super stretchy edge on my end rectangles, and in fact I would actually prefer to have something a little bit firmer, I'm just going to bind off my stitches using a regular knit or purl bind off depending on what your stitch pattern is. So in my case here, I am just going to continue working in my stitch pattern and then binding stitches off one over the next. And my stitch pattern is just purl knit, purl knit, purl knit. Yours might be different and that's perfectly fine. Just stick with a plain knit or purled bind off in pattern. So I'm going to work my first two stitches. And then bind off by passing the first stitch up over the second. Work my next stitch in pattern. And then pass a stitch over. Work a stitch in pattern. And pass a stitch over. Work a stitch in pattern. And pass a stitch over. And I'm just going to continue binding off in that manner until I get to one stitch before the gap. Before I can bind off any more stitches, I need to close up this gap. And just like we have been, we're going to continue using a left slanting decrease. So it's either going to be a purl two together or a slip slip knit, depending on what your stitch pattern is. In my case, it's a slip slip knit. So we'll close the gap by working those last two stitches together and then pass a stitch over. So now we're ready to pick up our stitches for the next end rectangle here along the edge of this lower rectangle. And the process of picking up the stitches is going to be exactly the same as we've used up to this point. So we were picking up half as many stitches as there are rows along this edge. And in my case here, I have 14 rows along or 28 rows rather along the edge. So I'll be picking up 14 stitches. But remember, we still have one stitch left from this first end rectangle. So we're going to pick up our first stitch along the edge, just like we have been. And once that very first stitch is picked up, we're going to go ahead and bind off the last stitch of the previous end rectangle. So we're just going to bind that off. And then we can continue picking up stitches along this edge. So since I've already picked up one, I have 13 more to pick up. And then I'll work this 
rectangle, just like it was a wrong side rectangle, up until the very last wrong side row where I'll bind off my stitches. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about entrelock. As I said when we first cast on, entrelock is my favorite type of knitting technique because it creates a very complicated looking design that's surprisingly simple to execute. If you've enjoyed this series, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, The Chili Dog, on YouTube to learn more interesting knitting techniques and tips. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!